Hello everyone, welcome to the another Bluehead SEO series episode. In this episode, I will demonstrate you a project that I am working with over three years. And this is a project that I am working for the longest time. I can tell you that if I don't call the casino projects and PBM projects that I started to work in, in the beginning of my career until the Lumetic update. So because of that, I can tell you, you are actually seeing that an example of how to create a Nasdaq brand by using search engine optimization, organic search, while actually reaching out to do all the global areas. And in this specific project, there are a few uh, good moments that I remember. One of them is the stock prices were way much lower at the beginning. Then I bought some stocks and once the prices increased, then I sold them, which made, which makes me really happy. And another thing is that when I look at the three years before, I remember the moments that actually the even actually coming to the 700 clicks a day with this project was a big moment and when it drops back to the 500 people were actually getting anxious but you should understand that you shouldn't never you should never get happy or sad based on the stock price graphics search on search console graphics or cryptocurrency graphics you should just understand the graphic and focus on the bigger picture for the long term and if you look at the, this data Actually, I don't have the previous data before the 16 months due to the search console, but I can show you actually a kind of update section here. If you look at this one, actually, let me try to find it. This is a case that I published way before and you can see the NDA here. It is the reason that I'm not able to give this website name. And I can tell you that actually, I am the SEO who shares the most results with the most data and the with deepest uh, interpretations and usually I give you the website name openly so that you can actually check the future steps of the website if you need or if you want to do a research this time I can't uh, give it but maybe in the future if they allow me we can do this you can see the uh, you can check the publication date and you can see the let's say the Ashrefs graphic here a CMRush graphic here and this is the search console we started to work with this project when it was getting only 200 clicks a day and now it is getting actually 13 14 thousand clicks a day and this brings us to the mindset of the blue hat videos so blue hat means actually opportunist SEO basically we can call it opportunist SEO video and these videos are created for actually closing the gap between holistic SEOs which are engineering minded and let's say engineering mindset and data oriented and a little bit more let's say beginner level or editorial or people who look for shortcuts. And we are trying to actually bring both of them together in a, let's say, blended way. And in this Bluehead SEO video, I will give you 10 simple suggestions. In every video, I give you always a unique suggestion, which means that I won't repeat the same suggestion two times. You can think that there are there might be other suggestions for these case studies, but in fact, actually, these are only unique to this. And in the last five or six months, I published more than 14 Bluehead SEO case studies with 13 different websites. So that's why I'm suggesting you to watch our playlists in my channel as much as possible and join to our community. After giving uh, the suggestions, we will demonstrate the successes of our holistic SEO community members. To be honest, rather than writing new SEO case studies, actually sharing your success makes me very much happier because my main purpose and motivation in this field is changing how SEO is being done and being part of the search engine optimizations history as a concept and as a journey, as a science. And let me demonstrate some of the results here. This is a three months change. You can see that we increase the traffic over 35% clicks and over 22 millions of impressions. Impression, uh, average position has been increased like uh, maybe 20% there and we doubled the traffic in the last six months we increased our impressions more than two times and the average position for the last six months has been increased like probably 50% and this is the last year comparison you can see the actually the clicks are increased more than four times 400% impressions have been increased more than actually even nearly like 500% average position has been increased like one twenty percent in one year and this is the third year of the project you should also understand that once you have the topical authority ranking will be very much easier for you overall to be honest even if i write something non-quality here still it will be ranking but this is a subject for the search engine trust concept which is processed in this channel you can just make a quick search and find it as well so let's start give to give you some suggestions then 
I will explain a few things about the past SEO case studies and how you should actually interpret them. Because I see that people st still examine the websites that I published three years ago and they assume that still I work on them, but I don't. This is an agency and I can't force people to <laughs> follow my way if they don't want to. Because you should understand that the relation between SEO consultant and the website owner or brand owner is very similar to the, what a patient and doctor has. So when you have a headache, when you have a health problem, you will listen to your doctor. And once you are treated, you won't remember your doctor again. And in fact, if you put money in, people will forget about you even way much faster. And this is not the case. That's why we continue to work with them because this is a real business, real brand. But when it comes to the just people who have the websites it's, or small businesses or small mindsets, it's very hard to actually keep them in this branding journey with the organic search and uh, let's say inbound marketing because I see the SEO as a way of branding and I see SEOs as the business developers by using the organic channels, not just website rankers or click gatherers. It's, and this is the reason that actually I'm trying to change the mindset there out of respect to the SEO and SEOs. So uh, you see the result. And in terms of the interpreting these algorithms, sorry, in terms of interpreting the search console graphics. From time to time, I give suggestions and I will give you another unique one. In my framework, Corais framework, there is a concept that I use ranking state. The ranking state means that actually, whether you will be ranking better or whether you will be decreasing in the rankings according to the, your ranking state, which means that even if I actually don't optimize the website, even if I do everything wrong here, still I will increase in the rankings. It doesn't mean that actually the website is increasing its rankings because I am doing something wrong. It means that I passed a quality test here and until to the next quality test, I will continue to increase my rankings. If I can't pass the next one, I will continue with a little bit a natural way but after gathering enough level of historical data you will see even faster increases at the same time too this is the reason that i talk about these small bumps in the beginning because at the beginning we were actually let's say struggling for the 500 clicks or 700 clicks and this is how the life works too if you are demotivated because of the small bumps and these small bumps will be very big for you in that very time. But if you have vision for the future, you won't care about these drops. You will know that actually your system will bring you here if you continue to implement it. And this is how the life works too. If you get demotivated, if your morale is broken just because of a few things, the things that you won't even remember after one week, just don't focus on these things. Focus on the positive things that you are trying to achieve in a similar way in the SEO too. If a client or you or your team gets frustrated just because of dropping from, let's say, 700 to the 500, etc., it even doesn't work to explain on that very point. Just keep going. In a similar way, once we come to the 4,000 clicks like this, a positive ranking state we have, then we have a negative one. This is actually not a ranking ranking state. This is a quality test. And at the same time, the concept of ranking scale explains you this. Even if I optimize everything, but everything, I won't be able to exceed this range. Even if I increase the page rank, whatever I do, I won't be able to exceed this range because search engine will be always limiting by rankings. The same thing happens for the bottom line as well. These ranking scales will be changing from core update to core update, which means if you lose a core update, you will have a negative ranking state. Your website will be less rankable. Even if you do everything right until to the next core update, you won't see a proper a proper increase and you won't, won't be able to actually exceed this level. That's why you need these small drops. And that's why when I see these drops, I don't get sad. In fact, I get hopeful because it means I am being tested and I have an opportunity. When I am being dropped, my competitor takes my ranking, search engine examines the user behaviors, and of course does other possible uh, synthetic user behavior analysis as well. Then they put me another ranking state, another positive ranking state with another ranking scale. I am not able to exceed it since I am coming to, to the main competitors, already established authorities as a candidate source, 
there is another test in this area it goes down then another a little bit stale area another let's say a, a few simple tests then you see that actually suddenly we increase rankings even further if you start to imitate your competitor just because they outrank you here you will start to lose rankings even in the worst state so that's why when it comes to the search engine optimization in a holistic way by using semantics mainly and topical authority methodology in a way that we find and explain you should always focus on the bigger picture with let's say con constantly or continuation one more check that i suggest you is if you can for instance there are a few tools like serp robot or you can use python you should understand the you should understand the as much as possible try to understand the after that, the continuation of indexing because even if you get really good amount of impression from a query it doesn't mean that actually you are ranking for every second it means that from time to time instead of you the search engine might replace you with another source and they can keep it there for five minutes for gathering the data then they can bring you back if you are ranking for a query for 24 hours then it means that actually the search engine is confident enough that you are satisfying users and search engine needs you for satisfying these users and or their behaviors on the SERP so that's why you should actually examine for how long you are ranking for these queries for how constantly and continuously you kept in the served index. By using Python, you can do this type of checks. At the beginning, it will be like 15, 16 hours. And in this area, it will be like 24 hours. And for every article that you published before, they will be ranking for more queries, even if you don't update them. And this brings me to the second suggestion. After checking these uh, checks and these NDA or results, you can also examine it. The second suggestion is the content configuration. My topical author to course directly starts with the content configuration and it's not a co coincidence it means that if you don't keep updating your articles especially at least one time in every six months you will start to see new cannibalizations being outranked and new sources that come with the fresh information with according to the fresh queries they will start to outrank you so that's why in the course directly I started examining content configuration and how you can understand the query processing and query, let's say, meaning methodologies. And I will give you a real world example with these concepts. This represents the query and this represents my document that ranks for laser cutting machines and the cluster represents other pages that are similar to the mine. And this one, my document and its cluster represent the pages that actually focus focus on metals and materials so I want to rank for laser cutting basics and what I should be doing here because the things that you see here laser cut, laser cutting metals materials machines basically these are three components of the first let's say topical map for creating the course section in my system I have two parts of the topical map and when I mentioned the topical map concept for the first time I structured in that way but since I didn't launch my course for two years to wait people to get ready many people started to create just random topical maps without a proper system that's why I suggest you to actually understand these things as much as possible before trying to use this system so the first question is if I want to rank for the basics shall I open three different pages for all these these three different things or shall I open one page for these two and this one or shall I open a three pages for all of them or let's say one page for this and this and in my system I always have a macro context and micro context if I open a page for this on what level I should mention this from where I should link this all this structure will need to be holding your website for a really long time and in my past, I believe one before Bluehead SEO video, I have given a suggestion for updating every article for every six months at least and strike that money it should be. And they were updating at least one article a day regularly based on the rules. Here, we didn't do that. And you should understand this fact here. For the first two years, I didn't have any cannibalization. My topical map, especially the root of that topical map, was taking these two. And then I had a seed web document that focused on this. Seed was giving the authority back to the root one. And basically, it was ranking for this. I had two documents for two years. They didn't cannibalize. In the third year, they started to cannibalize with each other. To be able to understand this, you should understand how a search engine constructs an 
index. At the beginning, the search engine actually constructs an index for this query by using this cluster, which mainly focuses on the metals and the materials. But after two years, they can see that there are new query paths, which means people ser first search for laser cutting basics, then they search for, let's say, X machine. If they see that machines or machine types manufacturers, they appear more inside the documents and inside the queries, if they appear together, they will start to see these things more relevant to each other. The topical distance will be less. If that distance is less, the similarity between these doc two documents will be less too, which means that these two clusters actually will start to be one. It also means that the search engine will start to merge these two indexes, the index that covers these two and index that covers this one, they will be merged as well. In this situation, your two documents will start to outrank each other. And you will see that for, let's say, 16 hours, this one is ranking. For eight hours, this is ranking. If you see that, overall maybe in after three months you will even see that this one starts to rank actually 15 hours and this one ranks only for nine hours that's why i'm telling you that try to check actually the continuation of indexing even for the cannibalization situations as much as possible so at the beginning we didn't need any content configuration then i realized that actually my first document which is the root is not able to outrank this one anymore in the at the beginning actually I put machines separate from materials and metals because machines usually are products. And when you have a product, a brand, a price, a manufacturer, the search features, the context, and user behaviors will be very different. Because of that, you can't put them together with the materials and the metals, at least at the beginning. And it was the reason. And when you create your topical maps, it is really helpful for you to actually use the hypernames. A hyperneme in the lexical semantics, it means you have a group of word, which means a class word, a word that entails submembers. This hyperneme entails hyponyms. Hyponyms means submembers. In this case, here we have the material. It might be latex, it might be wood, or it might be glass or metal or whatever. So in this case, laser cutting materials is the name of the class and hyperneme. And let's say the glass is the hypo hyponym, which is the member. When you have a special these hypernemes, creating a topical map will be easier. But when it comes to the creating the map, you need to understand query semantics. You should understand which one will be going to the which page to the which section and how deep you will process it in what order. It also means that once my seed starts to outrank the root, my old internal links will be twisted, which is one of the main problems here and dangers. So that's why you will always need to check new queries, new in the constructed indexes, topical distances and topical borders. And that's why I'm telling that topical authority is not just covering topics, Basically, it is about how you cover them in the same page, in the top of the page, in what order, in what depth. If I start to focus on metals, but if I process the glasses deeply inside this metal section, it means that my contextual vector will be broken. I will be diluting the context there and search engine will start to rank this article for another document cluster, another query and another index. My association will be changing. That's why you should give the best answer in the most appropriate way in the best optimum place. And this is about creating a semantic content network without any random choice. So based on that, we do content configuration and we should keep doing it always. When it comes to the topical border, it is about where a topic starts and where a topic ends. Sometimes two topics starts to be one and sometimes they start to be two suddenly while they are one. Based on that, you will need to also change actually your own website or their connections too. If you don't change it, you will be outdated. And this is one of the reasons that I am telling you that if I'm not active on a project, most probably they won't be doing content configuration. As you see here, I am active still. We, are, we don't have enough time to do that because we need to keep up with some of the investment needs or some of the CEO decisions, etc. And this is one of the reasons that I defend that SEOs should be business developers and growth hackers, not just website, as I said, click gatherers. When it comes to this part, so this is the third suggestion, but I believe second one already had really good amount of data for you. And I believe you should watch this video multiple times. So this one here, this is about actually, if you create a brief or a content brief three years later, then you need to start 
configure your content, which consists of briefs that you created three years ago. You should understand that when you start to publish 400 articles in a connected way, your memory might not remember some of the old queries, old documents, your competitor queries. One of the class representative representative source that you compete with, it might have some other problems and other similar websites might drop in the rankings and you will need to go back and you will need to change things here. One easy way of changing your previous briefs is that when your team creates a new brief for a new topic, tell them that by using these intermediary topics, try to create some internal link changes. If you are able to create a connection, let's say from here to, to here and from here to here, and indirectly, let's say, if you are able to do this, you will be able to actually refresh at least four different documents. And let's say this is from two years ago. This is, let's say, one and a half. And this is one year ago. And this is from today. In this way, if you are able to create these indirect connections, you will eventually be updating your three years ago brief. And you will be gathering more query connections, new query connections like this, and you will be able to understand which document should be merged with which one and which one should be separated one more time. Or sometimes, this is one of the uh, easy ways of my framework because even if I need to create another page from an old one, I'm able to do it very quickly. You, you don't need to write even something new because we already think about these possibilities. Let's say I have a listicle here for a certain type of query you can directly take the heading and heading list and you can make them a separate page and from here you can add a new heading by writing a simple paragraph and link out you can always change the shape of these things in a very easy way and this is a representation of course uh, but if you'll check some of my projects or if you have seen my topical maps or the content networks it will be even more obvious for the future this might be the most detailed blue head video i know it but i also want to increase a little bit the detail amount as much as possible please watch the video for multiple times and again one more time this is the hrefs this is the SEM rush. you can also compare hrefs data to ACM rush since you see the already data uh, you can see which one actually has the correct information since my video editing skills is not that good it will be very hard for me to actually uh, let's say update uh, some or let's say blue some sections so let's give you some Next suggestions. I, until now, I believe I have given already more than 10, to be honest, but these are main two things. One is, let, or let's say three. One is understand ranking state and ranking scale. The second one is please configure your content. It is SEO is a process, always on process. It's not a meal that you eat one time. It's not a drug that you use only one time. You always need to do it. If you do it one time, you won't be saved for after a point. Eventually, new topics will come, new sources will come with high higher relevance, lower cost of retrieval. And if we continue for the this area, of course, you should always remember this method, like using indirect connections for content updates, especially at least for every six months. Another suggestion that I will be giving in this area will be about the Google Discover. So in this source, we are not getting enough level of traffic from the Discover. Of course, it's about a little bit the main topic. You already saw it, I believe. But uh, another problem in this source is that in the web page design, it's not possible to use an image that is wider than the 1200 pixel width. If you are not able to add this type of images to your source code as a featured image, I suggest you add it to your open graph. If your open graph image is quality enough to be used inside the Google Discover, even if your featured image visible one on the web on the web page is not appropriate, still search engine will catch it from the from the open graph. So in terms of the discover one before video, below head video, I also told you that focus on fun entities like podcasts, books, or more interesting things to rank in the discover or appear in the discover. There is no ranking there that much because it's a queryless content suggestion recommendation system. And I also told you there that if you have traffic from Google Discover, it shows directly which topic you have been seen as related to. I repeat some of these things because I believe I'm trying to merge two videos to each other so that you can actually go and watch there. And one more thing here is that in, when you have the Google Discover image, please be sure that you have the most important object of 
of this topic in a representative way at the middle of the image because Google Discover will be cropping that image. If in the middle you don't have that representative object, it will be harder for you to appear there. How you have been represented or demonstrated or served in the Google Discover will be affecting your appearance chance in that area too. So we will move on to the next suggestion and it will be about the video pages here. First of all, you can always check actually this type of date to see what happened to the, all of your video content. When it comes to the video SEO, one especially in the news industry, I suggest you to use please YouTube. Don't use like other hosting services or video portals. Don't use also first party uh, serving as well. Use YouTube because Google will be promoting it. Even if they don't accept that, there is data that shows it openly and it is very understandable why they are promoting the YouTube. It's their own product. So use YouTube for there. Another thing is that if the video doesn't represent all of the web page, don't use the video at all. If you are using a video for a web page, be sure that it appears in the main content at the, at the above the fold or very close to the above the fold area. You can also use video placement. This is a little bit interesting, but maybe I can uh, draw it. In my framework, I have three, let's say, two sections in a document. One is main content, other one is the supplementary content. Since over three years, we tell it. So, this, let's say, section is main content. And let's say your video appears in this area. Then actually that video will be indexed. Because one difference between Google and Microsoft Bing is, Microsoft Bing indexes all the images and videos. Google doesn't do that. They just index an image or video if it represents the page, if it is necessary, if it helps users to make a search in their image vertical or video vertical. And in this case, you can actually try to take your video from maybe this zone and you can try to bring it to the middle. Why I'm telling this? By doing this, you can understand the page segmentation algorithm of Google. Because if you look at the problem in this area, you will directly see that video is not in the main content of the page. But where is the main content is represented according to the Google's algorithms interaction with your web page. If you want to see Google's perception there, you can replace your video from here to here. If you see that it is videos are the index, it means that this zone is your bridge zone according to the search engine's perception or Google's perception. So play with these things to interact with them, take the signal, interpret the signal. Then you can also read some patterns like VIPs, uh, visual segmentation algorithms. You can check some data sets for page segmentation. I believe I explained some of them in the holistic SEO case studies as well for you. One more suggestion is about the sitemaps. So as you see here, even there are some not fetched sitemap, I won't touch it. I will explain maybe later. But one suggestion from me is, as much as possible, do not use a single website for the large websites. Please try to, as much as possible, try to use your sitemap uh, in a chunked way. This is also a trick that we use especially in the news SEO. If your website are large or enlarged, you will need to chunk your website maps according to the topics and these URLs will need to be linking each other with a contextual crawl path. It means that if you are able to chunk your sitemap according to the context, search engine will download your sitemaps more frequently and you will be indexed more because if you are putting everything to the single sitemap, a search engine will probably skip it more frequently because it's very heavy. Let's say I just need to check 10 documents, 10 URLs, but you tell me to download 6,000 URLs. Instead, you can chunk your sitemap according to the topics. You can do it like, let's say, 400 URL for each. And from there, it will be very much easier, actually, for you to go, uh, go after that because the search engine, if they need certain type of topics, let's say there is a demand trend for a query, they check all the documents related to that trend. They find your document and based on the internal links, they find other related documents to do that trend from your website and in this case if you put all these documents to a single sitemap because of the trend they will download that sitemap more frequently and they will be checking or they will be adjusting a download frequency for your sitemap according to the freshness need in that area but if you put your stale documents together with the fresh ones basically you will be having a disadvantage there because of that so another suggestion here is about the links. Whatever you do, put your homepage to the top in the top link pages. If the homepage is not the most linked page, it means that actually you are not distributing your internal links as it should be. And blurring all these things will be hard, but probably I need to 
hide all of the URLs nearly maybe anyway just try to put the home page to the top then put your root then put your seed your topical map and its hierarchy will need to be aligned as much as possible what you have in your internal link popularity this brings me to the another suggestion in this area the reason that i start from hypernemes to create my topical map is usually the hypernemes and hyponym relations that i created it is very relevant to the, my url structure first of all urls are the first thing that the search engine crawlers see before they see your content they see your url and this is a part of predictive information retrieval which is very low in the cost and high in the efficiency which means by checking the anchor text by checking the url they can understand what your document is about and they try to rank it very fast if they trust you and they can check your content later so for this initial ranking optimization you need to optimize actually your urls but usually people stuff keywords to the urls which is not necessary at the same time if it is an existing website i usually don't change the urls you can represent your website segments by using breadcrumb by using structured data by using your internal links as well in this case using simple url structures like single words it really helps me to actually tell my system or my semantic content network that these two segments will be linking more to the methods and it will be changing according to your monetization section if you are selling machines you will link this section more your supplementary content at the bottom will be changing you will be being connected to the main query with the main context at the bottom area without decreasing your relevance you will be passing your page rank relevance and ranking signals to the machines because you sell the machines if you are selling materials you will do the opposite if you are teaching methods you will do the opposite or a different thing there according to your source context your central entity will be changing and central search intent will be changing according to that too so you need to understand Corais framework to optimize these things especially with the sge these things will be even more and more uh, obvious to be honest so there is two there are two more suggestions from me for this area one another is use more measurement units try to do this type of simple searches let's say imagine that i am searching on google site let's say site name and search for a measurement unit it might be kilometer or it might be not or it might be i don't know celsius or whatever but if your topic is about engineering and more scientific things you will always need to have this specific type of measurement unit every measurement unit will need to be matched with a certain type of numeric value check your competitor how many numeric values how many measurement units they have per web page exceed that threshold in a really like double or triple times by making sense don't write gibberish to just write things make sense use a proper grammar structure there as much as possible and have more numeric values and have more diverse measurement units this will be connected to another thing which is information density it is also coming with another concept called findability how findable your information on this page and how you are able to communicate with it if you look at the page segmentation algorithms of the google even if you actually put this thing here like a regular article or if you put it with a different type of web page layout the meaning of these things may be same as individually but as a complete or as a whole they will mean something else i didn't explain the visual semantics in my course too because it's more advanced a little bit maybe in the future i will do but basically especially for your services pages because in our briefs and topical maps we also create systems or nodes for landing pages of services for converting purposes and when we do that inside the brief usually we add also design elements whether we will have a tab whether we will have a table whether we will have a price comparison or just icons with simple type of text etc we actually design the element with a mock-up then we write the let's say mock-up is here then we create the brief then article comes then the design is designed we review the design then we start to code it based on semantic html as well and simple let's say dom tree then we go to the live until now mainly we talk about just the of course uh, textual semantics part as much as possible so basically findability means that how findable that information there and how your web page is dense in terms of information if i am scrolling to the most most bottom part but if you just answer three questions or if you are able to tell me just a few things for a few price it's not that useful you should create some answer routes in the long form of my course i actually explain it which means that 
If you create a kind of eye tracking map in your web pages, where they will be looking at after where. If you put this component here and this component to here, and I will put one more, let's say this is another design element in this area. So according to the search engine, if the user, maybe I can draw it easily. So let's say there are three different components like this. If you assume that user first will see this, then see this, and then see that, it means that this sentence comes after this. If it is the opposite, if people search or see first this, then this, and then this one, it means that actually this sentence comes after this. Your visual representation should be aligning with your code structure, and based on these design differences, the meaning of these things will be changing too. So that's why I'm telling that how findable it is, and even if you use all the numeric values, measurement units, how they are placed to the page, it also matters as well. And I believe I have given, let me check my some of my simple notes in this area. Yeah, I believe we have given all the things here and it is 34 minutes already, I will be quick. So now your successes, probably I will do a separate video for this because there are lots of lots of shares in the last, let's say four or five weeks. So Joel, Joel, as Coppel shared his results with the semantics in our website. He says that it is a two months of old website. I am very thankful for him to share his results in this area and it makes me really, really happy. And in this area, we have the George Nicola and I really like him and he created really good results and very. I am thankful for him to share these results as well. And I, I suggest you to contact with him too. He knows these things in a really good way. Rahul Mulch Handani. I am very thankful for your uh, thank you notes as well, brother. And he directly actually tells here 15, 20 high authority guest posts and 10 link insertion. He also tells that he used and the results here are really promising for a really new website as well. I can tell just in 90 days, I believe. And I suggest you to read these things too. And this is from like, I don't know, four weeks ago or something. And Nicola von Gotze shared his results as well. And I'm very happy. He says that it's actually why NYL topic and very good results too. This is the HFS section of that too. And from also, let's say LinkedIn, Sushan Fa Duara. I am very thankful for seeing your results. I'm very also happy to share your results as well. I suggest you to actually contact with him and I believe he will be doing really great things in our community as well. And again, in this area, sorry for closing the, uh, these all the time, Umar Khalid Awan, he shared his results in this area too. And there are multiple, multiple shares from him. Thank you, brother, for your kindness. And here too, we have uh, not a share of the result, but he's, he creates a kind of uh, let's say visualization for me by giving some such simple suggestions and uh, very thankful for your credit brother it means a lot in this area too we have uh, this is also one thing that I really love because from Polish to the German to the I don't know sometimes Greek language to the, every different type of language we have we started to have different type of citations it makes me really really happy and I massage I believe uh, he shared his results I'm very happy to see that too and this is a German one Andre Schaeffer very thankful for your citation and sharing your results it means a lot to me and of course Luis Salazar Jurado always shares his results I guess this is the 10th maybe the 11th or 12th I don't count I stopped counting I am very thankful for his citation and also activity in our community as well Mohammed Ahmad Khan also shared his result so in the 21st March of uh, 2024, I will be opening the gates of my course one more time. Over nine months, the gates are closed, I know. We rejected actually hundreds of people to join to the course. The quality note will be something that I will be explaining in the coming new modules in the March. He created really good results here too. And here again, Umer Khalid Ahwan, Avant, sorry, he shared his results one more time. And then we have the Gulshan Takur, very thankful for his results as well. He shared, thank you, brother. And I hope I can, I, I, I can read your, uh, your, let's say, uh, last name, Mateusz Zalkowski. I hope I read it correctly. I am very thankful uh, for your citation and your share, brother. It means a lot to me as well. So before closing, 
Uh, I would like to actually show you a few more projects. In the future, I will be publishing these later. This is the update for the Setrack. As you see, this is the positive ranking state, as we call after a core update. And this is a, a new la launch with a small amount of content. We launched like maybe two weeks or 10 days ago, and I will update this later. But the problem here is that it is, the articles are not linked from homepage and there are many other problems, but it will be okay because there are some site migrations. This is something that I didn't pu publish before, but this is a small business. Maybe I can publish it for small businesses SEO. You can see the high potential here because with a single ranking, this source might get way much more clicks. It is actually very ready to be linked or very ready to be doing some different type of marketing strategies there. This is uh, another project and the main message here is before publishing new content fix your technical seo problems your initial rankings and re-rankings will be better in this case we didn't publish new content we just fixed the technical seo issues so we increase the high potential of the beginning of the rankings here as much as possible before closing i would like to also talk about this many people actually started to talk about the projects that i did maybe years ago i even don't know these projects anymore another thing is the purpose of the case study is not actually promoting a website a website can be outranked very easily and it mean, it doesn't mean that actually methods don't work. It means that the competitor also use the same method. Another problem is that these people are graphic brains, which means that they don't look the reasoning or reason or background of the project. They just look at the graphic. I am telling that because they say that, for instance, we have a Kanbanize here, says that 3.3 .3 organic traffic. The re reality is Kanbanize is redirected to another website, Business Map.io, and I didn't do it, to be honest. The same also happens with the Sunny Valley, and basically we did the re ranking yes i am writing this case study lately i am not publishing holy case your case studies there are more than 12 articles like this some of them wait over two years this is one of them and here too actually i am talking about how to do website migration properly to transfer the ranking signals and we increase the rankings with a brand new domain in sunny valley situation for 40 percent the query count increased also 25 percent as well and here i give actually an instruction list with the reasonifications maybe i will be able to publish it i don't know but basically it is actually it continues to be successful i am not active for any of these rest of the projects for the years i don't know what's going on with them but still here i explained a long answer i suggest you to check this answer in this area because as i say i am sharing the website names to help you but still i am not active in this not active in this not active in this but i will add this topical map to the course not active in this i will add the topical map to the course not active not active not active owner of this website is a great guy a brother to me i hope i can be active in the future again very good person, of course, though. this owner too. <laughs> I hope I will be active again. Very good owner here too. In fact, I can have acuity here, but I am not active right now. Not active again. So the thing is that I can't keep protect every website that I published. I published over 120 websites. I can't work for free. You should understand it. And as I say, just because Hagia Sophia actually is collapsing, it doesn't make the architecture and engineer bad or guilty. If you don't configure your content, if you don't implement the same strategies, you will be eventually failed. And the funny thing is that some of these projects are not given to be successful. Dogwood Care is not given to be successful. The thing that we explained there is the first 20 article brought us 30,000 new queries to rank for. The later 20 articles, they brought only 5,000. So I explained there what's the difference between them because first 20 articles were very much more quality. The later 20 were not because the person was a simple affiliate marketer. He just wanted to monetize and then we stopped working, of course. But the case study there explains why the first ones brought actually more traffic, not the second one. And it explains the characteristic differences between these web documents. And it also brings us to this quality threshold case study. Here too, I directly tell you that if you increase your quality, you will need to continue to increase it even further and further. Maybe I'm not sure, but maybe I've mentioned it here. No, I didn't. But same logic also has been told here too. If you don't keep improving your quality overall, eventually you will be deranked or outranked. When it comes to the, some other ones, for example, I actually explained it here too. For instance, some people have still mentioned the get wordly. Here too, I explained that I am not active on this project also. <laughs> owner is not active too because getwordly and other websites started to outrank the main domain we created four domains 
and were altering the main brand and it was a problem then they started to focus on the main domain and the purpose of the get word was actually helping people to download the language language exercise or gaming apps it was a purpose and we reach out to purpose if you don't know the internal stories of these things you won't be able to understand them by just looking at the graphic so that's why i'm telling the graphic brains won't get seo the same also unfortunately goes for this simple article again three years ago probably these things are published i don't touch them and it doesn't actually refute any kinds of thing here. Basically, when a website is outranked, you should check the competitor because competitor might be implementing the same strategy. It means that the strategy actually still continues to working and that's why we are able to publish these case studies in this area. I am not scared of these type of discussions. I am actually happy to make these discussions, but I believe some of these things happening because of the competitorship, not because of for helping the SEO. The reason that I am giving all these free endorsements and promotions is for helping people and changing the industry and to be honest after two years i want to exit the industry completely as well not seo but uh, this section and that's why i need let's say louis salazar or gulshan Tucker or other people i want you to be the leaders in the industry and this is one of the reasons that i'm not able to publish any more case studies because there is no time if you read this section you will understand them i even also explain in jazip.com because it explains the investment part in that area for instance all the sections here you can read it probably i will open a web document for that lastly there is a resource here and this one i suggest you to read it tells it is google getting worse a long total investigation of seo spam in the search engines the first time i mentioned probably a resource paper in the blue head seo video but this is 45 minutes so it's at the edge nearly to be a little bit holistic seo uh, version and if you want to join our community use this i will leave the link and soon in the 21st march of the 2024 which is my birthday i will be opening the gates one more time and you should always understand that i am not giving actually lifetime memberships i will give only the one one year membership and i give the lifetime membership to the people who share their results help other people for free or let's say give the course to someone else without expecting a return i want to create a lifetime community with lifetime membership with only the good people not with the people who have just the money and if the purpose will be just selling the course one more time i will keep the gates always open i will launch my course actually two years ago i will also start selling topical maps i don't do it because i believe many people don't get the system they just hooked by the concept but they don't get the meaning of it that's why i'm trying to train 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 by giving my own personal time as well okay i believe 46 minutes is good enough to explain this now probably my designer will be angry to me or video editor to all these blues i hope it works if i forget a few points just let me know please and love you all i believe we will be able to meet in in face to face this year in a holistic seo summit as well see you in the next time thank you